two. Uh, <clears throat> it's going to take place once again Saturday night, April 23rd at the NSB Arena in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, just as we did with the Friday night card for Bellator, we're going to talk about the top three cards of uh, top three fights of this card. Before we get to any of those guys, is there any other fights or fighters that you want to highlight for our listeners and fans? I'll tell you two quick ones. Um, there's actually a few. It's, this card is a lot better than the Friday night card in terms of depth. Yeah. Um, but one I'll highlight is Emmanuel Sanchez versus Yancey Medeiros. Uh, this is just a fun one. You've got Emmanuel Sanchez, who we always like on here, jumping up to lightweight to welcome Yancey Medeiros to Bellator. Obviously, Medeiros is Hawaiian, so he'll have huge crowd support here. They will likely put on a banger. And then the other one I'll highlight is Alamale McFarlane, the former champ. Uh, it's always fun watching her fight in Hawaii. She's fighting Justine Kish, where if she wins, she may earn herself another shot against the winner of the prior night's main event. All righty. Let us begin. Uh, the first of three fights that we're going to preview, Kyoji Horiguchi taking on Patchy Mix. Mark, set the table for us for this one. All right, so now we are into the Bellator Grand Prix in earnest. This is a true first-round matchup. Um, Horiguchi is the favorite, minus 290. Patchy Mix is plus 210 dog. Uh, it will be five rounds. All of these uh, Bellator Grand Prix fights, once we're into that official first round, are going to be five rounds, which is interesting. Um, the size difference here is going to look wild as we get the 5'11 Patchy Mix across from the 5'5 Kyoji Horiguchi. Um, Patchy will also have a six and a half inch reach advantage, which is pretty significant. Uh, Patchy Mix is 15 and one overall. His only loss was to fellow tournament participant Juan Archuleta. He's won two straight since then. He most recently out grappled James Gallagher and eventually choked him out. Um, I already have waxed poetic on the history of his opponent, Kyoji Horiguchi, back when he fought Pettis on, the, on this show. So I'll skip that here. But Pettis loss or no Pettis loss, this is a guy who is absolutely still one of the best bantamweights on the planet and who I'm sure will be coming into this one with a ton of determination after basically dominating Sergio for three and a half rounds before getting caught and put out in his last fight. Um, <clears throat> the story in this fight is going to be very simple. It's can Patchy Mix take down, control, and outgrapple a guy as good as Kyoji Horiguchi? And if he can't, he's going to be in for a very long or potentially very short night. Um, and I don't think he can. Kyoji is very comfortable on the ground himself. He knows that Patchy can only win this fight one way. Patchy has nothing to offer Kyoji on the feet, despite the length advantage. Um, Kyoji will be faster. He's more powerful. And I just don't think he's a guy that can be beat by a ground specialist. I, I think he's plenty skilled there and will eventually make Patchy Mix pay. Uh, if it was three rounds, maybe I'd say Mix could survive, but I don't think he makes it the whole five. I don't trust Mix's cardio to, for the whole five. I certainly trust Kyoji's. Uh, I will say we get a late finish, maybe toward the end of round four, Kyoji or, or Gucci by TKO. Omar, hit us with your take and your pick for Horiguchi versus Mix. Yeah, I'd have to agree, to be honest. Um, Horiguchi is a monster, man. I've loved Horiguchi since he was in the UFC. Um, even against his loss against uh, uh, Demetrius Johnson, it was a hard-fought fight. That was also the last time he got submitted. And getting submitted by Demetrius Johnson, I'm... It, it happens. Ask most people. It, it happens. Um, as far as the hands are concerned, Horiguchi definitely has the advantage in the hands. He also has the advantage, I think, in the distance management as well. Um, he's very good at being able to bounce in and out, uh, manage his range properly. He's always been a springy fighter, whereas Patchy Mix kind of has more of a, um, I guess if you want to call it anything, more of like a, a straight-up stand-up uh, Muay Thai stance. So there isn't a lot of uh, of covering distance very quickly uh, the same way that Cor Cor uh, Horiguchi does. His, his is more of a, I guess, a karate stance in that sense. Um, I also don't think that he'll be able to get controlled on the ground to that extent, at least not early on. It is very possible that, you know, later on in, in, in the fight, there might be an opportunity, but this is also not five rounds. Uh, this is a three-round fight. No, it is five rounds. This is five rounds? How many fights are five rounds on this fight, on this card? All three. That we're about to talk about. Holy cheese. Yeah. The whole Bellator Grand Prix is five rounds. You guys missed me saying that just now, huh? <laughs> I must have. I must have. Okay. All right. Well, then I stand by the statement that he could definitely get caught later on in the fight. However, uh, Horiguchi does have solid, solid hips. 
Um, so it's very difficult to just control him on the ground or, or even successfully get a takedown off of Horiguchi. He's very good at being able to get back up even when you're able to get him down on the ground. So I think Patchy Mix has a has a, a tall order in set for him. Uh, and I think Horiguchi ends up winning this fight. Um, I don't think he's able to finish Mix, but I do think he's able to nullify a lot of the work that he's going to want to do that night. So I'm going to go with Horiguchi by decision. I also like Horiguchi, but I'm going to go Horiguchi by knockout in round number three. I like it. I like it. You know, props to Bellator for uh, keeping things fresh, man. Five rounds, all fights in the tournament. That's pretty dope. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I too, yeah. did not realize that. And yes, Mark, I missed you saying that. Okay, let's hop up now into the Bantamweight division as well in the co-main event of Bellator 279. This fight, I am pretty excited about Juan Archuleta yeah. taking on Ralphion Stotts. Quick recap, or rather uh, uh, up to speed here. Archuleta, the American nickname is The Spaniard. Very impressive record, 25-3. and three. Uh, At one point, he went on like a 16-fight winning streak. Uh, he is... Seven and two in Bellator, but he is coming off of a loss against Sergio Pettis back at Bellator 258 back in May of 2021. Ralphion Stotts, he is uh, the five foot seven American fighting out of Houston, Texas. Nickname is Super. Also, very impressive record 17 and one. Uh, he also is undefeated in Bellator, might I add, as well as he was undefeated at LFA. Uh, so, guys, this is a. a Highly anticipated bout heading into Bell Tour 279. Omar, why don't you start us off? I personally love this fight. To me, this is this is my main event, personally. I know Chris Cyborg's the champion. I know she's got a name. I know people are going to pay for that fight and all this other stuff because they want to see Cyborg murder somebody else. I get it. I respect it. This, to me, is the main event. This is, this is what I'm here for. Uh, Archuleta versus Stotts is such a fantastic fight. Stylistic. I mean, Archuleta is... Arguably one of the more uh, uh, exciting fighters that is on the Bellator roster, uh, especially when you talk about the elite guys that are that are in this uh, company. Uh, and Rafael Stotts is, all, is also in that that same company. His his wrestling is elite as elite as he gets, especially here in Bellator. Um, and the fight is very very interesting. This I, I believe this is a result of of. Pettis having been out right, having having his leg injury yep. recently. Yep, it was supposed to be Stotts and Pettis. So it's you know Pettis had just beat uh, Archuleta, and so Archuleta now is basically getting another shot, I believe, at the interim belt. Right, they'll be fighting for an interim belt for this specific fight. Yep, yep, correct. So there's a lot on the line here. Uh, there's a lot of I think pressure on Archuleta to to kind of get it done and sort of recapture what he might have missed uh, last year. But he's got a tall order, Rafael Stotts, man. I mean. You're going to be hard pressed to stop Rafael from doing whatever he wants to do with you. Um, he's going to be very, very aggressive, going to be pushing forward, and he's going to be looking for that shot. And unlike the way I think we talked about Horiguchi when it came to his ability to not be on the ground, I don't have that same confidence in Archuleta to stay off of the ground consistently for five rounds. Um, and I do have confidence that Stotts will be able to keep that game plan going and the pace going for five rounds. So I'm going to go with Rafael and Stotts by decision. If not TKO. All right, Mark, give us your take and your pick. I was confirming my uh, all fights being five rounds thing. I got nervous for a second, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the favorite here is Rafion Stotts, a lot bigger than I thought he was going to be. Minus 265. Uh, Juan Archuleta is plus 200. I thought these odds would be wow. pretty close. Um, another <clears throat> Grand Prix quarterfinal here. Same as Omar. For me, this is the main event of the night, uh, especially because there's not a ton to say about Cyborg, so I will focus on this one. Um, Ralphion was the man they had chosen to get the first title shot against Sergio Pettis to kick off this tournament, as we just touched on. Unfortunately for him, Pettis got hurt. Uh, granted, they're teammates, so it did seem like Stotts was a bit relieved as well. Um, I personally didn't think they needed to make an interim belt here. Just do the tournament and let the winner fight Sergio. But I guess they really like the idea of a belt traveling through the tournament. So this is the matchup they've chosen to create this interim belt. Uh, and the man stepping in across from the 17-1 and Rafion Stotts will be 25-3 and Juan Archuleta. Um, a really high-quality matchup here. 
as our longtime listeners know, I've been a huge Rafion Stotts guy. I bet him to beat Magomedov at like plus 400 or whatever he was at, at the time in his last one. I called him my dark horse in this Grand Prix, but it seems that the world has now caught on because he was given the fight with Pettis, and he is a 265 favorite to win this fight. So I, I guess uh, Stotts has really arrived uh, on the on the national conscious now. Um, he is an undefeated fighter outside of a flash KO at the hands of Marab Dwalish, Dwalish Willie, who's obviously very high level in his own right. Um, <clears throat> the guy just goes, man. He does not stop. He has great cardio. He's so composed at all times. His wrestling is top shelf, but he can take the fight anywhere. Uh, it's wild to me that he's already 33. It feels like he should be a younger prospect. But this may end up being the fight where he breaks through here. Um, but he's going to have to earn it because you don't really beat Juan Archuleta unless you're elite. Uh, as I said, he's 25-3. and three. He's 7-2 and two in Bellator, but the only two men to beat him are the two champs, Patricio Pitbull and Sergio Pettis. On the feet, I absolutely think Archuleta could cause Stotts problems. He's a dangerous counter-striker. He'll also turn it up and walk you down at times. He's the naturally bigger guy. As I said, he fights at featherweight sometimes. Um, I think even more often than not in Bellator, he's fought at featherweight. Um, I could see him come out hot in this one. But <clears throat> I think about Rufus Sport having just recently game-planned against him for the Sergio fight. I'm sure that's an advantage for them here. And I think that Stotts is just capable of making those adjustments because he's so well-rounded. Um, he's going to have a three-and-a-half reach advantage. Three and a half inch reach advantage on Archuleta, which I think he can use to kind of keep Archuleta at bay at times until he gets his timing down. And then I think the grappling is where this fight's going to swing. Um, Archuleta's tough as hell, so I don't think Stotts will get him out of there. But if Stotts can out-wrestle Magomed Magomedov, I don't see any reason to think he can't do the same to Juan Archuleta. And I think that's what we see for at least the last three rounds of this fight, if not the last four. Like I said, maybe round one is a little tough for Stotts, but I, I think he really takes over and, and the wrestling shines. I will say it's a UD for him and that he is the in, new interim bantamweight champion. Okay. I like it. I uh, – let's see. Dude, I I just watched uh, – because I when you said he lost it to Barab, I was like, really? So I looked at his record. It's a 15-second first-round loss via spinning back fist. Yep. Back fist. I just I just looked it up. I watched it too. That sucks, man. Yeah. He just got caught. That wasn't even a fight. It was yep. two strikes for the entire fight. Poor yep. kid. That's that's a that's a sucky way to lose. Sorry, Mike. I just had I had to throw it out there. No, it's all good. And just to piggyback off that, you know, I'm gonna go with the virtually undefeated fighter. Well, you know, technically, you know, defeated, but you, you know what I mean. Uh, Rafael Stotts, I'm going to go with him by unanimous decision, getting it done over Juan Archuleta. I think his activity and his tenacity is going to earn him more points ultimately across the five rounds, and we're going to see him walk away with the W. With that being said, gentlemen, let's move it right along to the main event of Bellator 279 going down in Honolulu, Hawaii. <laughs> the legend, Chris Cyborg, Defending her, defending her Bellator Women's Featherweight Championship against Arlene Blencow from Australia. Blencow, the challenger, like I said, the Australian. She's 39 years old. Uh, after a 4-4 four and four boxing record, she turned to mixed martial arts. She now has a record of 15-8. and eight. Uh, She and Cyborg, Cyborg fought once before at Bellator 249 back in October of 2020. Uh, and Cyborg submitted... Blencow by submission via rear naked choke. Since then, Blencow has gone on to win two straight, and she's back to challenge Cyborg once again. Chris Cyborg really needing no introduction from Brazil, fighting out of Curitiba. She now, well, actually, she's from Curitiba, uh, and now she fights out of San Diego, California. As a pro, she has an outstanding record of 25 wins and just two defeats with one no contest. Uh, and she is riding a five-fight win streak into this title defense, and she is undefeated in her last four fights, undefeated in Bellator. That being said, Mark, let me start with you here. Uh, give us your take, set the stage, and uh, give us your pick for Cyborg versus Blancow 2. What is there to say about this fight? Uh, Chris Cyborg is minus 1,000. Uh, Blanco is plus 600. 
Obviously, these girls just fought about a year and a half ago, which ended with Blenko tapping to a rear naked choke. But I guess this is what happens when it falls apart with Kat Zingano and falls apart with Kayla Harrison. And then you make a rematch that makes no sense. Uh, so we don't need to say a lot here. In fact, we may not need to say anything else at all. Uh, Cyborg will win. <laughs> She'll win however she wants. This time, I think it's a KO. I will say second round, and that will be that. I'm going lightning for this uh, main event. <laughs> yeah. Omar, your turn. Give us your yeah. take. Give us your pick. I mean, this has kind of been the story with Cyborg. Is like, there's not really, there, there's no matchups outside of what we've had, what we had in the UFC, um, and outside of fighters that we wanted to see her fight in the UFC that are now in Bellator, that are going to intrigue us, that are really going to make us think that Cyborg has a chance of losing. You know. Bellingcow has every opportunity, I'm sure, to catch Cyborg in something and do something to Cyborg, but the chances are she probably won't. I have no reason to think that she will. Um, she's she's been beat up once before by her. Chances are she will beat up be beat up again by her. Um, I don't, and and I and I I say this full well knowing that Arlene is you know Bellingcow has has fought a, a good amount of people. She has experience. She has you know the the will and the tenacity to be in there. But I, I just I don't I don't see her on any level that Chris Cyborg is on. I don't I don't. We're we're we're, from, we're on two different books at this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, I understand that's where the division is and that is what it is. You know that's fine. I'll watch it. But there's not really much that we can really do off of this fight. It's this is Chris Cyborg's world until somebody else with <clears throat> okay you know, some interest comes into play. Chris Cyborg by however the hell she wants, like Mark said. I'm going to go Cyborg, TKO, round one. And, and no one here could dispute that. Any 